Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as I give a recap of the season four, episode seven, 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days entitled Who's Crying Now? This episode had me like, what? That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. So the episode starts off with Lisa and Usman, you know, and she wakes up looking a hot mess, honey. Okay. And of course, as usual, she's upset about something. And she's saying that at one point in time that she, he was supposed to be saying goodbye to a friend, which was only supposed to take him a few minutes. And she says 20 minutes later, he arrives. And he wasn't picking up his cell phone. And she goes, you promised you'd never leave me alone. And he's looking at her as if he's already irritated. And Uzma said, you knew where I was going. And you knew, did you said you were going to take a nap. And she's like, whoa, 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 bring it down. And he's just looking at her like, and he's just had enough. And he says, look, I'm saying I'm sorry to you all the time. I can't be wrong all of the time. Well, let me say it like him. I'm saying... I'm sorry to you all the time. I can't be wrong all the time. You are not good. And he's upset because it does seem like he's saying I'm sorry for every single thing. And she says, you know, I don't, you're a drama queen. And you just notice that she wants to take control of every little thing. And he recognizes that. And he says, you know, it's going your way all the time. You know, if I'm in America, it, will it get worse? Because if this how you're acting in Nigeria around friends and all this other stuff. Imagine what I'll go through when we get to America. I just, he's so frustrated with it. And I was so happy that he stood up for himself because I, I for a while, I'm thinking, man, is he just going to let her continue to kind of just be kind of rude? But gladly, I'm just clapping like, yes, good, good. Stand up for yourself. So we got Ed and Rosemary and Ed he said, hey, I apologize for the STD thing. C because clearly he still wants to know. I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, that's something that everybody should be asking about, you know, from anybody they want to be intimate with. Like, you know, can I have a status? Can I get some, some documentation that, that, that you're good? But he wants to make it up to her. So he invites her and tells her to take a warm bath. And he wants to give her um, a massage and he orders up champagne and he's, you know, really kind of trying to amp it up and be romantic. And when she comes out of the shower, he's like, you know, sit down. I want to I wanna give you a, a foot massage. And it just is really awkward because he's trying to give her this foot massage. And you got the camera crew there and he just goes right into massaging her feet. And he's like, how do you say kiss in your language? And she's like, holic. Halik. And he's like, well, can I halik you? <laughs> and she gives this little look like on the, the here on the cheek. And he gives her a kiss on the cheek. And it's just this <laughs> really awkward moment. So anywho, we go to Godfrey and Varya. And, you know, they, they're heading to Siberia to meet her family. You know, more specifically her mom. And they're on this plane, and after all of the drama and him throwing a fit, a t you know, temper tantrum about the fact that, you know, she's talking to American guys, he's quick to make a video about joining the Mile High Club. Now, look, there's no way, okay, if I'm really upset about something, especially after all of that, and I'm going to have some relations with you in a dirty, small airplane restroom, Girl, you really kind of you really kind of forcing my vote and thinking you really want to go to America. But anyway, as they're driving from the airport in this, I guess you could say taxi, she asks him, "What do you to take my mama's present?" And he's looking at her like, you know, I'm gonna give her all of my loves and hugs. And I thought, wow, 
<laughs> Girl, you did all of that on the airplane. And he like, what you talking about? Gift, gift where? What, 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 what we talk about? And she does admit, maybe I should told him before we left. Uh, yeah, if you expected him to bring a gift to your mama, you should have said something while they were around all the gift shops. You want to say something, we five minutes away. Girl, bye. So, anywho, I guess he feels kind of bad. And he tells the taxi to kind of pull over to the side. And I'm thinking he's pulling over because he got to pee or something. But he pulls over and he plucks some flowers and tries to make a nice bouquet. I thought it was funny slash sweet, but at least he tried to do something. He didn't want to come up completely empty handed, I guess. But you would think after all that on the plane, you would at least get a tennis bracelet or something. I'm just saying. So, anywho, we got Darcy and Tom, y'all. Oh, poor Darcy. So, she meets up with Tom in New York. And she's still salty about that that photo that she saw. And she's like, you know... Yeah, hi, you know, how are you? And he reaches out to give her a hug. And she's like, I don't feel comfortable. And he's like, you don't feel comfortable. Okay. And she says, look, you made time for me, you know, on this lunch gathering or this lunch meeting. He's like, oh, more like coffee. Being a jerk, you know, being real short. But, you know, in the back of my mind as a viewer watching this, I'm like, girl, you knew what it was from the jump. You knew he was a playboy. And you knew he didn't want anything serious. And you were trying to push this man into marriage. And we see that he done dropped a good 40, 50 pounds. So, you know, he really feeling himself. He feeling himself. He feeling, he feeling, he feeling himself. So, it just amped up the Playboy antic even more. And she's saying, that, hey, you didn't reach out to me. And, you know, on my birthday, you sent me this birthday text. And you told me you were going to video me. And you never did that because I waited all day. And he's like, oh, it wasn't enough, huh? And he's telling her, you know, he didn't intend to hurt her. And as he's trying to talk, you know, she's she's upset. And she's like, well, you never did. And, you know, he's like, you never let me talk. And it's all about you. And every conversation is all about you. It always flips to you. And you never love me the way that I wanted to be loved. And she says, you know what? Just say what you need to say. And it's like she's kind of pressing him like, why are we wasting our time? Let me know why we're here. Then we get to Stephanie and Erica. Okay, so Erica, she's like, my online persona has a certain perspective of me and I don't want to be intimate just yet and I'm like uh oh I already know where this is going you already have this sexualized image on your channel you already talk about things that you do and you got your boobs out and all this other stuff and I'm like mm, don't be surprised if Miss Erica takes that as that's how you are it's probably what brought them together in the first place and you know what they say in the south spooning leads to forking okay so you set out that imagery and you set out that idea and you put the little reel out for the fish and she you know she caught the bait so hey let's see what happens so Erica says you know in a confession screen well from her YouTube page, I think that this is something she would like. And I went, oh, I knew it. So we see Stephanie. She says, you know, um, she should have asked me first. Because what happens is they go to this, uh, this artsy place to where the art project is you're making this bust of your breast. And Stephanie feels really uncomfortable. She has this look like, uh, she should have asked me first. This is, uh. And Erica's like, you know, are you uncomfortable? She's confused and conflicted. Like, how would you be uncomfortable with this when you share your boobies with YouTubers? So she was just really confused. And she's just like, you know, you should have asked me first. And um, I'm just not ready for that in this relationship. And Erica says, you know, it's pretty stressful. Um talking about coming here and being in this country and moving back but you want me to give up all of my my life and being a photographer because it's interesting that the other two people that are with them in this class they could have been actors they could have been real customers we don't know it's tv but they say hey you know are you here on a date are you having fun and they're like yeah and they explain that she's from stephanie's from america and all this other stuff and they do ask a question well, you know, being in different co countries, how is that going to work out? Are you going to do a long distance thing? And Stephanie's just like, well, I don't see the long distance thing. I don't see how that would work in us being so far apart. And, you know, Erica's just like, for her to be so serious, they're really just trying to get to know each other. So for her to insinuate that she's just supposed to drop everything in Australia to come to America, she thought it was really controlling and, and really kind of like, you want me to do all this other stuff, but you're not even ready to be intimate? Okay. And I'd probably say the one that irritates me the most is Miss Yolanda. Girl, we love you, but girl, 
her and this Williams guy. The whole fact that he gave you a name of Williams blows me away. Like, you know, I... Anywho, so she still hasn't been able to contact him. She's never seen him. His Instagram got deleted because she's claiming he's claiming that he doesn't know how. But she still wants to go to England. But how? You have no address. You who are you looking for? What's the full name? What's the she has all of these red flags. And the mom the mom is just completely naive to what's going on. And the daughter is just like, we know my mom's not tech savvy, you know. But I believe she's being catfished because she's never seen anything, you know, him, nothing. So she's like, we need to research this name. So they research it and she finds out that the name um, associated with a certain account is a Nigerian name. And the phone number is Nigerian. And, you know, Miss Yolanda, she's like, I don't understand. He's from England. And I'm like, <laughs> so the daughter is like, let's just let's just find out what's going on with the number. And they call the number. And it sounds like a woman answers the phone. And the daughter is just like, it sounds like a woman answers the phone. And the mom's just like, well, I just don't understand. He's from England. <laughs> and the daughter's like, you see one thing and I'm seeing another. And the daughter's like, you know what, just ask him if he's Nigerian. And the mom is just completely naive. Well, Williams wouldn't do this. And we talk every day. So I don't understand what's going on. And I'm just at home like, is she really on planet Mars? I really think she's on planet Mars. Anywho, we moved to Ash and Avery. Okay. And you know what? Is it me? Or does Ash always seem like he's just, like he just sniffed a couple of lines before they start filming? I don't know if it's something medically going on with his eyes, the way he holds his eyes. But sometimes his eyes are really calm and quote unquote normal. And sometimes he just looks like he's just ready to run 13 miles because he did maybe half an eight ball. But anywho, so Ash, he's planned for this three day getaway to spend some time together. And, you know, we got Avery and she said, you know, I really want to get to the root of asking you really important questions because when we met with your brother, he really said some things that kind of sparked, you know, me thinking deeper on about, you know, you saying that you want to move to America, but you do have a son and you do have the ex-wife. And, you know, I really think that we need to talk about this. And she gives this, well, you know, if we connect and, you know, I feel that everything, and she's just like, no, 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 you always sugarcoat every answer. Why can't you just be honest and give me a direct answer? And it seems like you always go around sensitive subjects. And I need to know these things if we're going to talk about being so so serious. And you're telling me that you don't want to answer them because you don't want to you want to avoid an argument. Like that makes no sense. He never gives her a direct answer. And she's seeing all of these red flags. But of course, Avery cannot see past what she wants. And she keeps ignoring those things. So we ha we'll see how that goes. So Ed and Rose, they wake up. They both look a hot mess. And Ed and his mayonnaise hair is all over the place. And he wakes up and says, good morning, how are you? And the producers, you know, in the offset, you know, scene, they're asking her, were you guys intimate last night? She's like, I don't wait. No, I don't, don't answer. <laughs> I don't want to answer. So it's the fact that she don't even want to answer. And girl, you're on a television show, clearly. <laughs> But anyway, Ed says, you know, one thing I noticed when I was massaging you is that your legs look like mine. Can you can you can you shave your legs? And she's like, if you shave my legs, you shave your beard, your beard ouch, it hurt. And so <laughs> Rose, after they asked her again, hey, were you guys intimate? And then we have Ed confirm that, hey, we were intimate last night and it was great. Well, of course, man, it's been, what, two or three years since you had any? Anything would probably be splendiferous. Haven't used that big word in a while. Splendiferous. S-A-T word. But anywho, so, you know, he says, you know, I want you to shave your legs. She's like, I shave my legs, you shave your beard. You know, we make a deal with that because your beard hurts when you try to kiss me and all this other stuff. So he agrees that he'll shave his beard and she goes into the restroom and shaves her leg and he feels her shaved legs like, I like it. <laughs> really awkward moment again so ed 
<laughs> learns that there's no AC when they're going to her village. So we already know we're about to see him sweat like he crazy. And they make the arrangements to go to her village and they look all cute. They got their little travel clothes on. And as they're driving, Ed is really seeing the poverty and he's in shock. Like, whoa, is that is that a is that trash? Is that oh my goodness, what's 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 going on? He is just completely just like, oh my god, what have I got myself into? So then we go back to Lisa and and Usman. I hope I'm saying his name right. And it's the next day, and they're sitting in her room, and she's saying that, you know, I slept in here, and he came back, but he slept in another room. He didn't sleep in here with me. And Usman says she's very controlling, and it's not worth changes in my music in my life. And I have never, never, never understood this. So she comes into the room and she sits down like she's just been hit by a bus, you know, and she looks completely disoriented. And he said, you know, I have never insulted you directly or indirectly, but you always insult me. And if I come to America, I have no family, no one to turn to, no brothers, no no sisters, no no tigers, no bears, no friends, nothing. I, 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 if you're acting like this in Nigeria, imagine how you act in America. And, you know, Lisa, she says, you know, she always flips it around and blames everything else on everything else and she said it's just been a long trip you know I haven't had a decent nice rest since I've been here because she starts thinking you got to realize she didn't had she didn't had a, a little bit of a magic stick she didn't had the African anaconda she's starting to think about everything and how he didn't flip her world upside down and, you know, she's basically saying that I just want us to work things out and I'm just tired. And he falls for it and they make up and he's just like, OK, you cannot act like this baby love. <laughs> so, anywho, then we go to Siberia and we see Godfrey and he gives her, you know, this bouquet. And even the mother's just like, did he get this from the side of the road? What is this? She doesn't look too impressed. But, baby, please be happy you got something because he definitely got something on the plane. Uh, anywho, the mother is just expressing that she's worried she won't see her daughter again. And she's just saying, what are your intentions? And what I find interesting about this scene, the mother is asking, can I trust you? You know, you're going to move far away. And, you know, Godfrey does make a good point that your wife, I mean, your daughter is already far. I mean, she's the distance of a five hour plane ride away from you. So your daughter's already far as hell. And you're talking about her going to America. I have the gut feeling that her daughter is telling her something else. I already know that that daughter is not telling the mother her true intentions and that she wants to really go to America and, you know, live out this dream. So she's probably painting it as if this American man wants to sweep her away from her country far, far away. So her mother doesn't know her daughter's true intentions. Uh huh. So we go back to Miss Yolanda Lord. Talking to Williams. And it's been four days since she heard from from this <laughs> Williams guy. It's been four whole days calling a number that don't work. And she starts to text him and ask him if he's Nigerian. So, you know, we see the little caption that over the next two days, there's no answer. And then she reports that she gets an email from an unknown source. And they're threatening to release some provocative photos if she doesn't send them money. And also that they'll do harm to her. And then she admits that she did send some provocative new photos to Williams. And I'm just like, girl, you sending the photo to who? You don't even know who you sending it to. Like, oh my goodness. And then she says another naive and saying, naive thing and saying, this person, I, this doesn't sound like Williams. I don't think it's him. I honestly think somebody hacked into his email account and they're asking for these photos. I, this doesn't sound like Williams. And I'm just like, girl, do you know what genius you have to be to hack into two accounts? But anywho, um, she's just really, really dumb and confused when it comes to it. And she's just so in denial. And I'm like, girl, these people just swindled you into taking your clothes off of your 50 whatever your old body when girl you was feeling yourself and you don't lost a whole bunch of weight and you thought you know what I will take some new photos to somebody you ain't never seen okay 
We go back to Erica and Stephanie and they're going out to dinner because, you know, Stephanie's just like, I want to go out to dinner and I want to treat her. And she said, you know, when we go out to dinner, I really want to talk to Erica about something that I saw on her phone. And I thought, uh oh, here we go. And before they go out, she gives her this cute, pretty crystal tiara. And she's like, you know, you're my princess. And Erica's just like, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. So they go to dinner and they're talking. And before they even get to the main, they didn't even get the appetizer yet, child. And Stephanie's just like, you know, I really want to talk to you about something I saw on your phone. And I know you got a day nap on your phone. Will you delete it? And, you know, Erica, she's just like, well, you know, I got it, but it's not for what you think. And I also go on there, you know, for business stuff, too, which is probably a lie. But anywho, and she gets frustrated. And just to make her be quiet, Erica says, you know, I'll delete it because you told me to delete it. I'll delete it. And Erica feels like it's none of her business what she has on her phone because they dating and they still getting to know each other. And you asking me to do all this stuff and you won't even be intimate with me. And they getting this little tip for taff, honey. And Erica's just had enough. She takes off that little crystal tiara. She said, you can have this back, honey. It's not that serious. And walks off. And, of course, Stephanie's crying. And it's just a lot. Stephanie does seem a little controlling. But it seems like, hey, Stephanie, you need to put your foot down. Are y'all serious? Do you want to move to America or you going to move to Australia? Because you talking all of this serial, this, this serious relationship stuff. And I can't even touch you. And then you pull out this image of being very sexual online and you upset that I want to do something sexual with you. So what you going to do? So Ed and Rose, mm, mm, mm. he looking at all this poverty and he's like, it just looks like, wow, this is just like a third world country. Like what is really going on? And he's seeing the trash and he's seeing the little houses with no roof and he's just like, you know, this, this is your village. So like, yeah, this is where I live. This is my family here. And he's looking around like, oh, and as soon as he's really like in the midst of wondering, where am I? He sees Rose's four-year-old come out and, you know, he's hugging her and all this other stuff. And she's just quick to say, oh, that's daddy. And Ed has this realistic epiphany and saying, wow, you know, if we get married, she has a four-year-old son and I'm 54 and I have to be a dad again to a four-year-old, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you will, Ed, <laughs> and they do see Rose's sister, and he's, you know, sitting there looking at her, like, you know, the sister's looking me up and down, and I, I bet she's wondering, had I mentioned anything about her asking for money, and the sister doesn't look too pleased, she looking at Ed as if she don't know whether to stomp her, him with her foot, like he's a bug, or punch him in his face. She looked really, really conflicted and looking at him like, eh, uh, you know. And then the sister to the side, she thinks that he's little and fat. But other than that, when they walk in, which I thought was really sweet, the family does say surprise. And they're very welcoming despite everything. And they do, you know, create a lunch or a dinner. And I thought that was sweet. At least they did something despite how they feel. And, you know, at least they're prepared with a nice meal. So that said a lot about her family. So he's wondering where the father is and where he is. And the family's like, he's just running a little late because he's on the pig farm. And he's looking around. He's like, oh, wow, there's no roof. You know, there's no AC. There's no ventilation. It's just nothing. It's just, it's just, it's just an area. Okay. So the father arrives and Ed, you know, is trying to say hello and how are you doing? And he's wondering if the father is okay with the relationship because he's one year older than the father. Um, so then the dad, you know, wants to know the, the true intentions of him and the daughter. And Ed assures that he wants to be with the daughter. He wants to just get to know her deeper. And Ed still wants to know if the sister and the family were behind asking for the money in the first place. But it's really hitting home with Ed. But Ed, man, your coworker told you. That village is very poor. I know people from there. I even got some family there. It's really, really poor. And some people would do any and everything to get out of those desperate situations. But him being so blind and him trying to hurry up and be with Rose, he wasn't listening to it. So now that he was there in the thick of it, oh, now he's now he's snapping into reality. And he says, wow, uh, these living conditions and how poor she is. I'm really, really starting to think that I'm her ticket to America. Honey. So we finally got the last scene with Darcy and Tom. 
And Darcy's had enough. You know, she's basically saying, you know, I knew about, uh, do you have anything to say? And he's still not saying nothing. And she's just like, I know about the, I know about the new girl. And Tom was like, well, I met someone who loves me the way I want to be loved. <laughs> you know? And, you know, unfortunately, Darcy is heartbroken. And, you know, she's just like, I wonder why you just didn't come forth and just tell me what was going on. I really thought we had something. And Tom says, you know, you were occupied with other things. And, you know, end up feeling like, um, you know, I think of you as a sister. And Tom's just being a true jerk. Just really egging it on and flipping it around on her as if it's all her fault. Because we all know Darcy loved her sometimes. She really tried to be with this dude. They both are broken people. Tom is this jerk of a playboy leading her on, you know. And she was blinded by what she wanted. So it was just a really messed up situation. And they agree to part ways. And it's just really, really ugly. And Tom starts to feel... Like, he wants to egg it on and make her feel worse because, of course, it's just bad. And asking her, did she put on weight? And, oh, my life's better now that you're not in it. Just really, 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 really mean. And it was just a messed up situation. Darcy, you got to take responsibility for this. Knowing that that man was a player. Knowing that he really wanted to live his life. Girl, he wasn't serious. And for you to be heartbroken, it hurts me, but you got yourself into it. Tom, that's messed up. You shouldn't have let that girl on like that. What do you think? Let me know. Hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Check out the playlist to also look at other movie and television show reviews. Also, follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore E. Blow up the comments. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next week. Until then, bye.